Hello, my name is David Stephen Cohen. This is a re-recording of a talk I gave several years ago entitled, Who's Afraid of Historical Evidence? Rutgers, the New Jersey Historical Commission, and the Non-Federally Recognized Indian Tribes in New Jersey. I grew up in Bergen County, New Jersey in the 1940s and 50s. I attended Rutgers College in New Brunswick where I majored in history. I then obtained a master's degree in American history at Claremont Graduate School in Claremont, California, and then another master's degree and a PhD in American civilization from the University of Pennsylvania. At Penn, I specialized in studying the relationship between folklore and history. I learned that folklore was just not quaint old stories and songs, but sometimes essential beliefs about one's identity. In one seminar titled Regional and Occupational Folklore, a fe fellow graduate student gave a paper on what were then called a tri-racial group in North Carolina known as the Lumbees, who were said to be the descendants of the lost colony of Roanoke who intermarried with Croatan Indians. I knew about a similar group living in New Jersey on the New York, New Jersey border known as the Jackson Whites. They were said to be uh, the descendants of Hessian, that is German mercenary deserters fighting the, for the British during the American Revolution, Tuscarora Indians migrating from North Carolina to join the Iroquois Confederation in New York uh, State, escaped slaves, and prostitutes brought by a man named Jackson for the British troops occupying New York City during the Revolution. Under the supervision of a University of Pennsylvania anthropologist, Reuben Reyna, who was an expert on community studies of Indians in Central America, I moved to Hilburn, New York to conduct fieldwork and uh, historical research about the group. I learned that the common surnames among the so-called Jackson Whites, DeFries, Van Duck, uh, De Groot, uh, uh, were basically Dutch, not German. That the Tuscarora Indians migrated through Pennsylvania, not New Jersey, and that there was no historical evidence about the existence of a man named Jackson. Instead, the name probably originated from the phrase Jacks and Whites, in which Jacks was a common slang expression for free blacks. But most importantly, I found that rather than descending from uh, escaped slaves, the group's ancestors were a community of free blacks who spoke Dutch, had Dutch surnames, and attended the Dutch Reformed Church, uh, whom I call Afro-Dutch, living in the 1670s by the fresh water on the outskirts of New York City, where Johan de Vries, Emmanuel's, uh, 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 Klaus Emanuels, the son of Mang Manuel van Angola, and Augustine van Dunk, they bought shares across the Hudson River in the Hackensack Valley on land purchased from the Lenape Indians in 1681 by Lady Elizabeth Carteret, one of the proprietors of East New Jersey, thus making them some of the first black landowners in America. They were later joined by Joost de, de Groot. The Tapan patent was on the disputed boundary line between the colonies of New Jersey and New York, and when the boundary was finally settled in 1773, it was drawn right through the Tapan Patent. In 1798, New Jersey passed a slave code requiring African Americans to have a pass from the Justice of Peace in order to cross the state line. It was shortly after that that the ancestors of the Ramapo Mountain people began to sell their land in the Hackensack Valley and bought land in the part of the Ramapo Mountains wholly within New Jersey. The Ramapo Mountains were named after the Ramapo Indians, a subgroup of the Wappinger Indians of Westchester County, New York, and Connecticut. Their sachem 
Katona sold his land in 1708 and 1743, and his uncle Tapko sold his land in 1710 uh, on the Ramapo track uh, and moved, uh, both of them moved north to Stockbridge, Massachusetts to join the Stockbridge Muncie Band of the Mohicans. An Indian named Manus sold the track of land in Pothat, that is uh, present-day Slotesburg, New York, in 1737-1738. And in 1758, under the Treaty of Easton, the Pompton Indians sold all of the remaining lands in northern New Jersey. This was during the French and Indian War, in which the Lenape in the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania, under their leader, Titiusco, initially tried to remain neutral, but ended up siding with the French against the British because of grievances such as the Walking Purchase, in which William Penn's descendants cheated the Lenape out of their land in Pennsylvania. Under the Treaty of Easton, the remaining Lenape Indians in New Jersey were forced to move to a 3,000-acre reservation in Burlington County that became known as the Brotherton Reservation. Thus, by the time the Ramapo Mountain moved to the, Ra Rama the Ramapo Mountain people moved to the Ramapo Mountains, most, if not all, the remaining Lenape Indians either moved or had re been removed from northern New Jersey. Once they arrived in the Ramapos, the, uh, they, found, they founded or created three settlements, one on Stag Hill in Mawa, another in the Ramapo Pass town of Hilburn, New York, and the third across the Ramapos in Ringwood, New Jersey, where they found employment in the Ringwood iron mines. They adapted an Appalachian mountain people culture but it, was, it, but it came with a negative stereotype of them being inbred in the parlance of the day or being degenerates in the parlance of the day, a stereotype most famously embodied in James Dickey's 1970 uh, novel Deliverance and in the 1972 Hollywood movie of the same title starring John Volt and Burt Reynolds. Upon my completing my dissertation, I got a job as an assistant professor of history at Rutgers University in Newark, where I co-founded the American Studies program on that campus. I was also offered a contract from Rutgers University Press for a book based on my dissertation. It was published in 1974 under the title The Ramapo Mountain People, the name I gave to the group that had no name for themselves other than the negative Jackson Whites. Even before the book was published, I learned that the Ramapo Mountain people preferred to be an Indian tribe rather than the descendants of Afro-Dutch free landowners. My personal opinion at the time was that this was a clash between two different ways of understanding the past, legend or oral history versus documentary documented history. After the publication of my book, The Ramapo Mountain People in 1978, uh, the, mountain, the Ramapo people uh, in, in 1978 incorporated themselves as the Ramapo Mountain Indians, Inc., and applied for federal recognition by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. The irony was that they adopted the name that I had given them, a situation I addressed later in an online paper titled The Name Game as part of a series of papers titled Dubious Descent on Academia.edu. In 1979, I took a job as a research associate at the New Jersey Historical Commission, a state agency in the Department of Education in Trenton, New Jersey. The same year, the New Jersey legislature passed a law quote, memorializing, unquote, Congress to recognize the Ramapos as an Indian tribe. The reason was that either Congress or the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the BIA, legally recognized Indian tribes as semi-sovereign nations. 
No one in the legislature attempted to consult with the Historical Commission or me about this legislation. In 1988, the United States passed the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, under which recognized Native American tribes could negotiate with states that already had a, f uh, a form of gambling to establish Indian casinos or other forms of gambling. New Jersey had permitted legalized casino gambling in Atlantic City in 1976. Even though the Ramapos had applied for recognition by the federal government over a decade before the Indian Gaming Act, Atlantic City casino owner Don, at the time, Donald Trump, famously said at the time, they don't look like Indians to me. More importantly, the issue cut off one of the two ways that the, an Indian tribe could be re federally recognized, that is, by an act of Congress. The Ramapos hired a genealogist named Rob Roger Jocelyn, who met with me in Trenton to show me his research and ask me to change my conclusions in the book. He showed me information about the Indian named Manus who sold land in the Klotzberg area in the early 18th century. He said he thought Manus was the ancestor of the Mann family, but he could not show that either he, that neither, that either Manus nor his offspring married into the group that didn't move to the Ramapo Mountains until after 1800. My claim that the Emanuel's family were the ancestors of the Mann family was based on the Dutch patronymic naming system in which the second generation took the Christian name of the male parent and added an S or an SE, as in the case of Manuel van Angola and Klaus Emanuel's. Jocelyn also show, uh, showed me the fact that John de Vries signed that a John de Fries signed up for the Orange County Militia during the French and Indian War, listing his race as Indian. However, I noted that if he were a Lenape, he was fighting on the wrong side, because as I mentioned previously, T.D. Uskung sided with the French against the British. Besides, as I mentioned in my book, if one or two Indians did marry into the group, it did not make them, it did not make the group an Indian tribe. In November 1993, the BIA made its final determination on the Ramapo petition, noting that they failed to prove, quote, the group consisted of individuals who descend from a historic Indian tribe, unquote. In their technical report accompanying the final determination of the BIA's Branch of Acknowledgement and Research, BAR, as they assigned a uh, archaeologist, a historian, and a genealogist who wrote the most academic review of my research. They dismissed a letter from Bu Bud Shepard uh, because uh, he was a, consul a consultant for unrecognized Indian tribes uh, and a letter from Linda Stamato as being a restatement of quote unquote common knowledge about the Ramapo Mountain people that was, quote, never questioned until the 1970s by the research of David Cohen, unquote. They also dismissed citations from the writings of Frank Speck, a University of Pennsylvania anthropologist and a student of Franz Boas. Speck had made one trip to the Ramapos in 1908 and collected baskets that he called Native American from a group of white mountain people living in the uh, New York section of the Ramapos uh, near Ladentown with the surnames Pitt, Conklin, and Hogan Camp. Camp. Hogan Camp. In fact, uh, the late Ann Lutz, an amateur folklorist who collected music and ballads from this other group, criticized me for using the name Ramapo Mountain People for the quote-unquote Jackson Whites. The BAR dismissed statements from Seton Hall archaeologist Herbert Kraft, who was a friend of mine, because in 1995 uh, he wrote to the U.S. Attorney General, quote, at no time did I profess in an in-depth knowledge concerning the Ramapo Indians, unquote. And they also dismissed archaeologist Edward Lennox, stating that, quote, there is no primary ev evidence, unquote, 
supporting his theory that the Lenape Indians continued to re reside in the Ramapo Mountains. The report also criticized my genealogical work, noting that, as I did in the book, that there is a gap in the documentary record between the Afro-Dutch landowners in the Hackensack Valley in the early 18th century and the appearance of people with the same surnames in the Ramapo Mountains after 1800, a distance of only 12 miles. Nevertheless, the report did state that the, quote, BAR continues to agree with Cohen's conclusion regarding the lack of primary source evidence for an Indian ancestry among the RMI, that is the Ramapo Mountain Indians, unquote. The irony is that once the BIA uh, denied the Ramapo petition for federal recognition, the media in New Jersey and New York, as well as uh, the online entry on the Ramapo uh, in uh, Wikipedia, began to assume that they were an Indian tribe. In 1995, Governor Christine Todd Whitman signed into law the creation of the New Jersey Commission on Indian Affairs, consisting of repre a representative of the Ramapo Indi Mountain Indians and two other non-federally recognized tribes the Powhatan Renape and the Nanticoke Lenny Lenape. The Powhatan Indians were a tribe originally from Virginia of Pocahontas fame, but there is no evidence that they migrated to New Jersey to join the Lenape. Nevertheless, they did establish a so-called reservation in Rancocca State Park. The situation with the Nanticoke Lenny Lenape is more complicated. The Nanticoke were a tribe living in Maryland and Delaware. Most of them left their homeland in 1768 to join the Iroquois Confederation in upstate New York. Yet some Nanticoke did remain in Delaware with the surnames Corsi, Norwood, Harmon, Ridgewood, Oakham, and Corsi. In July 1742, John Corsi, a chief of the Chicacoan, Indians signed a peace treaty ending a plot against the white colonists at Winnesockam on the Nanticoke River in Maryland. It was an insurrection planned by a Shawnee Indian who met with Dixon Corsi and other members of the Nanticoke tribe. In 1855, Levi Sockam, who was a major landowner and sh storekeeper in Essex County, Delaware, was charged with selling gunpowder and shot to his son-in-law, Isaac Harmon, in violation of a Delaware law forbidding the sale of firearms to African Americans. At his trial, Lydia Clark, age 74, whose maiden name was Norwood and who was a relative of Harmon's, said to, uh, and said to be the last speaker of the Nanticoke language, testified that a number of the Nanticoke intermarried with African Americans and that she was the child of such an intermarriage. Based on her testimony, Sockham was convicted. In 1861, he sold his land in Delaware and moved to Gloucester County, New Jersey. Mrs. Clark died in 1856 and someone erected a tombstone with the epitaph, the last of the aborigines of the county, a person of truth and a witness against the arrogant Negroes that assume to be what they are not, unquote. In 1875, Delaware passed a, nor a new law establishing segregated public schools for African Americans funded by a property tax on African Americans. But in 1881, Delaware also established an Indian River School District for, quote, a certain class of colored persons, unquote. Beginning in 1912, University of Pennsylvania anthropologist Frank Speck began visiting the Indian River. And in 1921, he helped them incorporate as the Nanticoke Indian Association and showed them how to make strings of beads and feathered headdresses and taught them Native American songs and dances, resulting in their holding their first powwow. Meanwhile, in 1850, Levi Harmon, who was born in Fairfield County, married Nancy Bailey, a direct descendant of Othaniel uh, Murray, a 
free black landowner in Fairfield County and one of the founders of the free black community of Gouletown outside of Princeton, New Jersey. Murray was said to be a Lenape or Sikkimese Indian from Cape May. Another founder of Gouletown was Benjamin Gould, another landowner, thought to be the child of Elizabeth Adams and an African-American. Adams was the granddaughter of the Quaker proprietor of West New Jersey, John Fenwick, who disowned her in his will because of her alliance with a black man. Two other founders were Richard and Anthony Pierce, two mulattoes from the West Indies, uh, brought to Culhansen, that is Bridgeton, as indentured servants and who themselves uh, brought to New Jersey two Dutch sisters, Marie and Anna Van Acke, later Wanaka, whom they married. Theodore Gill, the great-grandson of Benjamin, uh, uh, the uh, Theodore Gould, the great-grandson of Benjamin Gould, became the pastor of the Bethel Church on the 4th Street in, 4th Street in Philadelphia, the so-called Mother Church of the African Methodist Episcopal, AME, denomination. Benjamin F. Lee, the son of Sarah Gould, and, a and Abel Lee, became the president of Wilberforce University in Ohio, the third oldest historically black college and university, HBCU, in the United States. His cousin, Theophilus Gould Stewart, became the chaplain in the U.S. Army and served with the so-called all-black buffalo, buffalo soldiers in Cuba and the Philippines and then became a professor at Wilberforce. I discussed the Nanticoke Lenape in an online paper titled The One Drop rule in reverse, referring to the informal rule in the segregated uh, South that one drop of African-American blood made someone a Negro or a mulatto. In 2001, the New Jersey Division of Gaming Enforcement responded to an inquiry from the Federal Indian Arts and Crafts Board by stating that there were no recognized Indian tribes in New Jersey. At about the same time, the Republican governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie, made the Powhatan Renope to leave their so-called reservation in Rancocas State Park. In 2011, the Ramapo Lenope, as they now were called, uh, the Powhatan Renope and the Nanticoke Len Lenape signed an agreement that the state of New Jersey would recognize these three tribes in ex exchange for their stated opposition to, quote, any American Indian tribes or group within the state of New Jersey or American Indian tribal nations outside the state of New Jersey, unquote, to develop casino gambling or pursuing land claims or lawsuits against New Jersey. In other words, these non-federally recognized tribes took it upon themselves to speak for the recognized Lenape or Delaware peoples in Oklahoma, uh, Wisconsin, and Ontario uh, province, Canada. In 2020, I received an email from Teresa Johnson, who identified herself as a Lenape Indian living in Moraviantown, Canada. She thanked me for my book, The Ramapo Mountain People, and expressed the opinion after visiting the Ramapo uh, Mountain People in New Jersey that they were not Lenape. In subsequent communication, she informed me about a project at Rutgers University in Newark involving the, Ramap uh, the Ramapo Lenape and several uh, uh, Lenape from Moravian town. I contacted Professor da Jack Chen who was recently appointed the Clement Alexander Price uh, Chair of Public History and Humanities. Prior to coming to Rutgers, Professor Chen was the founder of the Asian Pacific American Studies Institute at New York University and co-founder of the Museum of Chinese Studies. Despite having no background in the history of the Lenape Indians, he taught a course titled, quote, The Lenape Way, decolonizing Newark slash NYC, unquote. 
on his one of the, one of his board, presumably advising him on Lenape traditions, was quote Chief Vincent Mann of the Turtle Clan of the Ramapo Lenape, and Clan Mother uh, Michaeline Picaro Mann, also of the Turtle uh, Clan. It should be noted according to Robert S. Grummet, who has a PhD in ethno-history from Rutgers University, the clan system was created after, Lenape, after the Lenape had left New Jersey in connection with the Big House Ceremony, a nativistic revival movement. I wrote to Professor Chen telling him that I had been a friend and colleague of the late Clem Price at Rutgers Newark. I informed uh, Ms., uh, Professor Chen of my work and also suggested that rather than relying on his Ramapo consultants, he include the work of Robert Grummet and David Ostreicher, another PhD uh, anthropologist who taught the Ramapo Indians, uh, who taught the Ramapo Indian words and traditions in the 1970s, just as Speck had done uh, earlier in the century with the Nanticoke. After some exchange of pleasantries, Professor Chen ignored my suggestions. About the same time, Dr. Anit Bash Bakshi, an instructor in the Department of Landscape Design at Rutgers, uh, New Brunswick, published on academia.edu a project titled Our Land, Our Stories, Excavating Subterranean Histories of the Ringwood Mines and the Ramapo Lunape Nation. Her intentions were good, that is to document the lead pollution left at the Ringwood Iron Mines uh, by, uh, former Chevrolet at this, by the former Chevrolet assembly plant in Mawa, but her method was faulty. She relied on research by her undergraduate students who cited Frank Speck and Edward Lennett, Lennock and dismissed my work as being out of date. I also wrote to her but received no response. Then, in July 2021, the New Jersey uh, Historical Commission, under the direct directorship of Sarah Curitan, an institution for which I had worked for 28 years, decided to host a series of webinars to be posted on YouTube in conjunction with the New Jersey Commission on Indian Affairs. The first webinar was titled, New Jersey's Indigenous Voices, sharing the continuing story of indigenous peoples in New Jersey. It was moderated by Dr. Jameson Sweet, an assistant professor of American studies at Rutgers, New Brunswick. He is a Lakota Indian with a PhD from the University of Minnesota. Despite the fact that he is not an expert on the Lenape Indians, he teaches a course titled Native, Americans, Native American New Jersey in which among other topics, he writes, quote, student will, students uh, will also study the present condition of indigenous peoples in New Jersey, such as their fight for environmental justice, federal recognition, and the revitalization of their languages and other political activism, unquote. Among the speakers were Reverend John Norwood of the Nanticoke Lenape uh, Indians, Dr. Maria DeFries, Lawrence of the Ramapo Lenape uh, and uh, Claire Garland of the Sandhill Indian uh, Historical Association. The Sandhill Indians were not originally mem original members of the New Jersey Commission on Indian Affairs, and they have a history similar to the Nanticoke Lenny Lenape. One of their surnames associated with the Sandhill Indians is Crummel. When the Brotherton Indian Reservation was disbanded in 1802, not everyone left uh, with the tribe to join the Stockbridge Band of the Mohican Indians, then in New Stock Stockbridge, New York. Anne Ashatama, known as Indian Anne, daughter of Elisha Ashat Ashatama, who resided at Brotherton, married uh, John Rapp, uh, that is Anne Ashatama, married uh, John Roberts, an African-American from Dingletown in Shamong Township, New Jersey. She made her living selling baskets. They had a daughter named Hester who married George Smith. Hester and George had a daughter named Annie 
who married an African-American named Frank Crummel. They had two sons, Frank and George Crummel. George Crummel was a charcoal burner who was known as, quote, the Indian Collier at Jenkins Neck, um, mentioned in um, John McPhee's book, The The Pine Barrens. I posted questions during the webinar, including whether it was right for uh, to uh, write for a group that may have had only one or two Indian ancestors to be recognized as an Indian tribe and gave the three recognized tribes the right to speak for the rec and what gave them the the right of the three state recognized tribes, the right to speak for the federally recognized tribes in Oklahoma and Wisconsin uh, and uh, the Lenape in Moravian Town, Canada. However, Sarah Curtin announced that there was no time left for questions and when the Historical Commission posted this webinar on YouTube, the site did not allow for any comments. The next webinar was held on August 20, 2021. It was titled Exploring Indigeneity, Native Identity and Expression. It was moderated by Trinity Norwood of the Nanticoke Lenape with, repet- uh, with presentations by Carell Hall of the Nanticoke Indian tribe and a PhD candidate in anthropology at Rutgers University, and Ryan Victor Pierce, a Nanticoke Lenny Lenape and founder of the Eagle Project in New York City. Ms. Hall's presentation was ahistorical and treated the state recognized tribes as the equals of the federally recognized tribes. Mr. Pierce talked about the Eagle Project that he founded to express, quote, American identity and our Native American heritage through theater. Again, I tried to pose questions during the webinar, but again, they were ignored by the moderator. I think anthropologist David Ostreicher summed it up when he wrote, to be sure, at least a few individuals from such groups may have had a Lenape ancestor or ancestors at some point in the past. However, it is questionable whether having, say, a great-grandfather or a Lenape background is in itself tantamount to being Lenape, or that one can simply discard the overwhelming predominance of uh, his or her Indian ancestry. Moreover, many individuals making these claims have no documentation whatsoever to support them, nor have they the demonstrated knowledge of Lenape culture other than what they had read in books or by learned from lectures often delivered by other non-Indians, unquote. We seem to be living in a time when historical facts no longer matter. We have seen this when the legitimate media media has been called fake news and when the fake news uh, was peddled on social media. Continuing, contributing to this problem is the World Wide Web, especially with websites such as Wikipedia and YouTube. The problem is not the internet. It is the rampant, what it is rampant today in academia where uh, histor- what is, the problem is rampant today in academia where historical facts are either ignored or dismissed. And as someone who has worked in developing historical materials for elementary and secondary schools, I ask why should anyone study history if history is just a matter of opinion?